any questions about support and resistance and market structure? You are good at that. Hmm? Everybody. If I, know. if I, if I like. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. You just had to remember for the um, support and resistance, the stronger the market move away from the level, the stronger the level is, right? Yeah. Simple. The, the point here at the peak, the better, right? And also take into consideration your quarterly figures, you know? If you find a level near the quarterly figure, just take the quarterly figure level. All right. All right, well, since we, we, um, we could get past support the resistance, I'll just show you a quick, a quick other type of support the resistance. And then after we are going to trend lines, right? So while there is the typical support and resistance level like this, right? The level with the market have a tendency to bounce in and between that level, like how oh, it was bounced in here, it was bounced in here. It have what we call dynamic support and resistance, right? Now a lot of people go look at dynamic support and resistance like um you might look on your well if you if you if you try to study for it for yourself you might come across um patterns that when where they say okay this they they would see this and they would call that a triangle pattern right and all different sorts of triangle patterns but really and truly is 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 more like a um i would call it dynamic support and resistance right that simply means that Instead of the support and resistance going sideways, it's it could be going in any direction, right? So it could be like this, right? It could be horizontal. I'm here my horizontal. I mean slanted in a form. You know, trend lines, we are going to trend lines right after, but trend lines is 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 a form of dynamic support and resistance, right? So what what um dynamic support and resistance is, is just simply when you see the market um, bouncing off certain levels, but it, won't, it, won't, it, it would look like a um, triangle sort formation or the lines would just be, it wouldn't be horizontal in a form, right? So you might, let me get, let me get, a, let me get a tool that would help us with it. Where is it? Just one second. All Okay, so sometimes when I see the market go like this, go like this, right? No, that is the market. Um, people would look at this and they would call it a triangle formation. That means the market just tightening, right? You just go in. It bunks in within these um these levels and as it get between these levels it just get tighter and tighter right so it would look like something like this right there's a farmer consolidation right and the um the idea is as fast as it gets tighter and tighter within the peak of the triangle um, this is this is like what our triangle pattern is. You would expect how you how you trade this. You would expect to wait for the market to break out in either direction. It could be up or it could be down, and then you wait for it to retest and then go long, right? And to be like this, right? 
essentially that is when the market is in some form of um consolidation and then it it, it would just have like a um a big a, a huge move right so I'm looking on Google to find I'm looking on Google to find examples of what the lesson are trying to teach you here. But some pairs, some kinds of pairs probably will happen, right? So this is an example right here. This is an example of dynamic dynamic circuit research right here, right? You see the market not really making high highs and high lows, but then it um it consolidated into somewhat of a triangle formation right here, right? You see the market come up. And then like we said, it broke out on the level, come back, retest, and that's where it probably would have gone shot to down here, right? So essentially dynamic support and resistance is like connecting the dots. So you see how you would connect these support levels, I mean, resistance levels here, like this. Dynamic support and resistance, you just connect the levels, but you connect it, it doesn't have to be horizontal, it could be like this, right? I mean, I don't use it much, but it's just something you should know, you know? It could look like this. That's where you just connect the valley and the peaks. It could look like this, right? That's where you just connect the valley and the peaks and then you watch how the market reacts to, to those levels, right? It could either be in a triangle formation or it could be in a, um, a channel formation or you just, all right, so you see how you would have this, right? And you connect this right here. The idea is the same as the normal support and resistance levels, right? Just how you would trade the, um, the horizontal support and resistance levels, you would trade this one. So you see how you had two um, valleys here, and then you, 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 um, you draw out the, the level. If you was paying attention in the last class, you know that you can either get a brick or a bounce, right? So just so we had this, um, these candles right here. When I was teaching you in the last lesson, remember I said you wait for a brick of the support and resistance level, right? You wait for an entire candle to close on the other side to confirm the level is broken. And then once the market come back and retest the level, once it come back and touch the line or the, the, the highlighted area, then you could go short in that direction, right? Yeah. So it's similar to trend lines, which we are about to go and do now, but it's just the rules are just slightly different, right? But this is not, this is not, um, this is not something I use often, but it's really good to know. Any questions? All right. So, this is one of the most important confluences you're about to learn right now, right? And it had, it had a right way to do it, it had a wrong way to do it, and it had my way to do it. I just do it how I see it work for me, because I would test it out and try it over and over again to make sure it work, working for me, right? So, trend lines, right? From the first lesson, you should always know the rules of a trend right market making lower lows and lower highs right in a downtrend right but uptrend the market making higher highs and higher lows right now a trend line is a tool we use to find an entry in the trend or 
find an early reversal before the market even break market structure. That's what a trend line could tell us, right? One second. Now, I would imagine that I think everybody in this group. Oh, let's see what's on this group. Okay. They say 90% of this group probably know how to try is already, right? I just need to show you a proper way to use it, right? So, when you're using a trend line, this is how I use it. Very different to other people, right? You connect the, the if it's a downtrend, you connect the lower um, highs to each other, right? And then you wait for the market to make, to approach the trend line for a third time, right? So, when the market makes its first low, come up, make its first low at high, right? You don't draw the trend line yet, right? When the market makes its first low, come up, and then it makes its second low, you don't, you don't draw the trend line yet. Is only when the market come up for the second time and then it drop, then you're allowed to draw the trend line, right? And you connect the, um, the two lower highs for a downtrend, right? Now it's important to know exactly which lower highs is the two most recent lower highs to connect the trend line. Because sometimes, a lot of the times actually, you would probably get it wrong. And you would get it right with practice, right? No. Let me just have a seat. No. No, just like, just, just, this is just a confluence, right? You're learning at least five of them, and then you would combine them to find a trade, right? So, we know that a market usually trends in a zigzag motion, which gives us the opportunity to draw trend lines to, to basically analyze the trend, right? The trend line would tell you the strength of the market, right? It would tell you how strong, how strong that currency moving right now, or how weak that currency moving right now, right? The yeah. steeper, the steeper the trend line, the stronger the trend, right? What that means is if you find if you if you find a, a market that's trending like this, right? And you draw your trend lines, then you know that this is a strong bear market. This market dropping hard and fast. As a good sign, you probably won't you probably shouldn't look for longs and then you should just look for um a retest of the trend line, right? So how you would enter a trade on the trend line is you would wait for the market to come up for the third touch and you would enter on the third touch and go short, go down, right? Now the reason why this works is based on historical data, right? Essentially, if you look back in history and you use the trend line strategy, you would see that it works a lot. So it has a high probability of working out if you use it correctly, right? A lot of the times, traders around the world, they know how to use a trend line. So when, when they draw their, their trend line and they wait waiting for the market mm -hmm. to retest, to enter short, it's now you alone waiting to enter short here. You and millions of other people in the world waiting for the market to retest this trend line. And then all of y'all go just throw your money at the market to, to push down this currency pair, right? Even though retail traders don't have a big influence on the market, but 
this is a strategy a lot of people um, would use, right? So just like the, um, the support and resistance levels, how you enter them, the same for the trend lines, right? You can enter it two ways. You can enter on the break or the bunks. If it's on a downtrend and you're expecting it to continue short, then you wait for the market to come up and you enter your trade short from this level, all right? When you enter your trade, you can put your stop loss either above the, um, the last high, right? Because you know this is a downtrend or you can put it beyond the trend line, right? Because according to the rules of the trend line, the, um, the market not supposed to go past the trend line, right? Now, some people, they would draw their trend line like this, right? They would connect this high to this high, right? Now, the rules, how I use trend line, these are the rules. You have to connect the two most recent highs, right? Now, if you have a trend like this, then this trend line, according to my rules, this trend line will be incorrect. You have to connect the two most recent highs. So the trend line would look like this, right? Now, you can have a, now, when people have their trend lines like this, they call it an outer trend line, right? An outer trend line, meaning this trend line is on the outside or it have a trend line within that trend line, right? Now, yes, that works, but the, the, the following my rules of drawing the most, drawing the most recent highs is a more higher probability of analyzing a trend and drawing a trend line, right? Now, just like support and resistance, you wait for the market to retest the trend line. If if it was um okay, let's say it was let's say it was this trend line, you wait for the market to retest the trend line and you go short, right? Or well first it's how to make a um, how to make a level. My bad. Right. So you can either enter short here, or if you're expecting it to break, then you wait for the break and then you wait for the market to retest. It could be a, any it could be a candle come back down. As long as you have a candle on the other side of the trend line, then it's considered broken. So whenever the market comes back down to touch it, which usually happens because the market always likes to kiss the trend line before it leaves, then you enter along, right? No. I'm not sure all y'all example how you would use all the strategies I taught you so far to find a high probability trade, right? So let's say that the market trend in down, downwards, right? Let's say the market trend in downwards, right? And now you draw out your support and resistance levels, right? And now, you know the market's in a downtrend. So now you draw out your trend line, right? Single line. Hmm? Who day? Who <laughs> I'm not sure. You don't know that man. You know that man? No. Uh, no, you don't know that man. No, I don't know. So, Let's say you see the market do something like this, right? It pulls back. And the market is now at, the market now looks something like this, right? Now, you know, based on what you learn, at this spot in the market, you have two confluences lined up, right? 
you have the trend line, you have your support and resistance, right? And now you also know that the market is in a downtrend, right? So that's three reasons telling you that this spot in the market is an interesting spot to go short because you know you have three reasons to go short at that spot, right? And sometimes if it's, if it's a quarterly level, like um, let's say it was 1,500, right? No, you have four reasons to go short right there, right? And then you just put your stop loss above your um, support and resistance, above your trend line, above your quarterly level, right? And then you bring down your take profit at least three times the, the um the stop loss, or you bring it down to the next support and resistance level, right? And sometimes you would find a trade here. The market drop, the market would drop again, right? Pull back, and you could get another trade, another setup right here, right? Go look at the um, support and resistance level. Another opportunity to enter short, and that's how people would enter multiple trades at once, right? Now, a rule of thumb, right? Remember this rule, right? Whenever you enter a trade and the trade drops 30 pips, move your stop loss to break even. And when I say move your stop loss to break even, you take your stop loss and you drop it down to either the same level you sold at or two pips under the level you sold at, right? That way, if anything happened, anything crazy happened and the market decided to just shoot back up, then you won't lose any money, right? You would be cut out at break even, or you might just make a dollar, right? But this way you don't lose any money, right? So if the market drops 30 pips, you go break even, you leave the trade running, you find another trade, you enter, right? Okay, let's say it, let's say that. Yeah, let's say it hit this um support turn resistance level and it drop, right? Now the thing about the market, the market is attracted to these levels, you know? Like if the market moving and the market is near the level, more than likely the market will shoot up to touch the level before it goes, right? So I'm gonna hop on the charts and find some examples, right? What time frame we got? Four, right? So we're gonna start. We're gonna start right here. So we had high, oh, high, low, oh, right? Sure. Just to, just to figure out the correct way to draw the trend line, right? So if you have a trend line like this, you draw it like this, right? All right? Now those of you who already know how to draw a trend line, then this might look a, this might not look right to you, but this is how you would draw the trend line. I know you could draw it like this. You could draw it like this, but according to the rules, you have to connect the two most recent recent lows, right? And the two most recent lows would be this, right? So when you connect that one, the two most recent lows, when the market make another high, then you adjust your trend line and then you connect that, that most recent high, right? And then when the market make another high, yeah, just your trend line, and then you connect that most recent high, right? Now I know 
to the people that already know how to draw trend lines, this might seem new to them because not, not a lot of people draw their trend lines this way, right? So, and this is what I mean by um, the trend line would help you to find a reversal before the market break structure, right? Now, I just go to a random spot in the chat and I was just following the rules, right? Now we can see that the market, the market push up, pull back, push up, right? Make a new high, pull back, broke the trend line, right? Several candles closed beyond the trend line and several candles retested the trend line. And according to the rules, remember, we enter shots on the retest of the trend line we also enter short at resistance, right? Because this would be resistance, right? If I trade on the line chart, you'd see a peak and you can see this is resistance, right? So drop, market come up, make resistance, market breaks resistance, which we expect because it's an uptrend. Now the market broke the trend line. A break of the trend line, is signs that a market is about to is is is, is signs that a market is headed into a downtrend, right? And now we had the retest of the trend line, which was in line with the support and resistance. Two reasons to go short right here, right? Now you could have placed a trade right here to go short, stop loss above resistance, take profit down to the next arm level, right? And you have a short trade right here, right? So let's continue. Now we have, we continue drawing our trend line. Low, draw your trend line, right? Low, connect your trend line, right? Now we have a new row. Connect our trend line, right? Now, you yeah, had to remember the rules, right? We want a full candle to close on the other side of the trend line for the trend line to be considered broken, right? Now, these candles, these candles, they, was, they didn't completely go on the other side of the trend line, right? When I say a full candle, I mean like the entire candle, the, 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 the body, the wick, have to be on the other side of the trend line, right? Now we could see that it still has wicks on this side of the trend line, so we won't consider this trend line broken yet, right? So now, we connect these lows because according to the rules, the market maker, the market, I'm gonna get rid of two. Market make a low, pull up, make a low, right? Pull up, make a low, right? All right, so. Right here, we could see that the market broke the trend line, right? Market break the trend line, it didn't come back to retest, that's all right, right? We connect these, we're just practicing, we're just walking through how we, how we are using the trend lines, right? You know, you could draw out your highs and lows so you can make sure that um, you know where um, you, you, you could use your trend line, right? So, connect. All right, and then after we connect, and now the market break the, the, um, the trend line, right? But yeah, so let me hop, I'll, I'll show you a couple of my pairs that I'm looking at right now, and you would see where I drew trend lines, if I have any trend lines, right? So this is oil, right? 
this is the weekly chart on oil. I have a trend line. Remember what I say, the higher the time frame, the stronger the um, pattern, right? The, the stronger influence the pattern have on the market. Okay, everybody with me? Hello? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. All right. All right. So here we had the market move up on the weekly chart, right? Monthly. Oh. Weekly that? Oh yeah, that's monthly, monthly, my bad. Right? Market come down, break the um monthly trend line and come back up to retest, right? Same thing is happening on every time frame, even on the monthly. Right? No, as a trader, I know that the monthly trend line is broken. So I look in to look for shots when the market come back to retest the monthly trend line, right? So as a trader, you would highlight this level, right? Because at the end of the day, when you pick your favorite pair, you look at the monthly time frame come down. So you should know where things line up on a monthly so you can highlight that area and dive into it on the weekly, right? And go down to the daily. On the monthly. So we don't want a weekly now, right? This is a highlighted area where the trend line broke, right? Now, if we look, see we have a trend right here, right? The market come down, come up, come down, come up, come down, come up, right? Now we can draw a trend line like this. All right? And then we could drop down on a daily. To get us here. Yo, you make it look simple, bro. Well, well, simple. Yeah. So, thanks. So we drop down to the daily. And then after, we, we know that this is the area where the market has. First of all, you know that this highlighted area is the... um the monthly trend line retest zone, right? You see this dotted line here? This dotted line that run across the screen right here? This dotted line is the monthly trend line. And the reason why I put it as a dot is to tell me that this trend line is broken. So when the market come back to retest that trend line, we pay attention, right? So then I will go down to the daily and then I will just look. I'm anticipating the market to, to reverse around these highlighted areas, right? So I would look for a breaker structure or a breaker trend line and then look for a retest of a support and resistance level. I just I just go in based on what y'all been taught so far, right? So then we would we would draw with daily trend lines, right? And we could even draw it like this, according to the rules, right? So now and only then we had the break. We had the break right here with this candle, right? Because this entire candle closed on the other side of the daily trend, the daily trend line. Because look at the daily trend right here, right? We had one, the market break the trend line. Two, the market broke market structure because look, we had a low, a higher low was removed, right? So no, trend line is broken, high was removed. That tells me the market has reversed and it's probably going to a downtrend now. Look for shots. We're in the highlighted area, right? So no, I remember this is a daily chart. So this happened in a day, right? So over the next few days or for that next week, you're looking for shots on oil, right? And you're looking for the best area to short oil based on where you learn so far, right? And where you learn so far, sorry. You learn, you would wait for the market to retest the trend line. Yeah, more, uh, removing the highlighted area, right? And I'll just bring this 
back to here, all right? Yeah, so you could you could draw in your arm support and resistance. You draw it in on this arm peak over here, right? And you wait on one or two things based on what you learned so far. You could wait on the retest of the monthly trend. Look, the monthly trend line still here, still still valid. If the market retests that, then you could look for shots there. If the market retests the support and resistance level here. Then you can look for shots. If the market you test these um these this this broken daily trend line here, then you can look for shots, right? So let's say we would look for shots around around here because this is a support and resistance level, right? Now, if you look closely, you could see that the market came up. And just like you've been taught, the market like to kiss the level before it goes. The market didn't come up as far as to touch the um the daily trend line because the trend line is kind of steep, it's kind of aggressive. So a lot of the times when the when the trend line aggressive, it's steep, it's hard for the market to come all the way back up here to touch the trend line, right? So that's why you would just look at the support and resistance level. That's where you have different confluences. Now, this might just be a support and resistance level, but I'm sure it have several other reasons why you could go short here that I haven't thought as yet, right? So let me hop on the four hour just to see what it look like, right? No, remember where you were start. Support and resistance, you draw it on the point. When it pointy, the juicy, right? You see how this one pointy, pointy drop down? You have a support and resistance. You have several bounces from the level, right? So you know this is your support and resistance level, right? You know you had a breaker market structure, right? So you know that you have to look for shots. So you just had to find the best place to shot the market, right? And the best spot would be your support and resistance level so far, once you had a breaker structure. Because it don't make sense shorting it down here, the market doesn't move already. Now remember what I told you, you don't shot a bare candle, right? You shot a bull candle, meaning you want the candle to come to you. You don't want to chase it. You don't want it when it's going down, you don't want to chase it when it's going down. If, it, if you see it going down, that means you get left. You wasn't paying attention and you get left. Don't even bother with it. You only want to catch the market when it comes to you, when you can trap the market, right? So that's where you would um, go short based on where you learned so far, right? And this simple monthly, this simple strategy help, help, would help you catch a monthly reversal, right? Because this simple strategy, if you had entered shot on that level, I'm sure you would have catch several, we come too much pips with that. If you had to catch a shot and hold it, that was about 1,300 pips, right? A dollar a pip, $1,300, $10 a pip, 13,000, right? So let me continue the um trend line analysis and see and see and see how well it works, right? So now in the four hour chart, you could draw a trend line here, right? Everybody paying attention? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're just going based off of the trend lines right now, right? No, exactly what I said to you. In the market make a new low right here. Because you had to pay attention, right? That's why it's good to draw out your uh, market structure. Make a glow, make a low right here, pull back, and then make a new low, right? So now you adjust your trend line, right? On this low, maybe put it on this low, right? So now that you had one, you had a breaker structure here, right? Market pull up and it passed this high. Oh, a whole candle form on the other side of the trend line, so now you're looking for the trend line retest, right? Now the market retested the trend line on this level right here. Now this is why you give your, um, your trade space to breathe, right? 
because the market is a messy place and they don't just touch the trend line you know it would it might consolidate around the trend line you know it might go into the trend line but they give it space right so then if you wanted to take a long a long here based solely based on the trend line rules you gotta take a long here right stop loss below the trend line or stop loss below the last low but if you're extra careful right and then you can see that the market went into consolidation, right? Now, let's just continue the trend line strategy, even though it's in consolidation, right? You have a low, you have a high. You have a low, the next high is around, you have a low, next high is around here, right? Market break on the other side and pull back up. So we have a trend line here, then we can adjust it to put the trend line. Um, can I get messy over here? But um, let's see high, low, high, right? This was the last low, high. Yeah, I will high trend line break an entire candle, this candle right here, on the other side of the trend line. Signal in a trend line break, market retest. No, we on the four hour chart, but if we go down to the one hour chart, it, it may look a little more clear, right? Because it will be more spaced out, right? All right, so break, and then all of this would be the retest, right? As long as the market didn't make a new high, it's in a downtrend. Because one, the market broke market structure, boom, make a new low, and this was the last high, right? This candle did not go beyond this candle, which means it's still a downtrend, right? And according to the rules, you could even draw a trend line like that, like this. It look almost horizontal. But if you follow the rules, you can still draw it, right? And you can enter a shot at the trend line retest, at resistance, stop loss above the last high, and look, you have a shot tree right here, right? You could go down to the next resistance level or the second resistance level, or you could just leave the trade open with no stop loss. I mean, no take profit to see how far it will go, right? And this is what I mean by aggressive trend line. When you see the market drop, you draw, you draw your trend line, right? You drop again, you draw your trend line, right? Now here you could draw your trend line. This is just this is just practicing drawing trend lines, right? Market make a new high, you draw yeah, you adjust your trend line. All right. Now the market broke the trend, but it did not um retest the trend line. And that would happen a lot. Not all the time the market go retest the trend line. You just had to be ready for when it does. All right? Now it's better to draw your trend lines on a daily, the higher time frame, daily for our you know, because the higher time frame, easier. Well, like I said, patterns tend to work out more on the that the lower you go, the um the lower your probability, right? The higher the time frame, the higher the probability of the um the pattern actually working out, right? So when it comes to trading and you're analyzing the market, you pick your currency pair, you hop on a monthly, you draw the two most recent trend lines, right? You hop on it and support and resistance. You can hop on a weekly, you put them down too. You hop on a daily, you put them down too. And you just wait. A lot of the times you will find a trade set up, but, and this is what I mean, right? 
you could find a trade set up days in advance. You find your trend line break, then you find the level where the market would retest the trend line, which aligns with your support and resistance and your market structure. However, the market is not at that level yet, so you just wait until it gets there. If it doesn't get there, then you don't enter the trade. But when it gets there, you would be ready to execute or you would have a sell limit at that level, waiting for the market to reverse, right? Now, a lot of people, they don't know these, they don't know that you could do these, these, use these tools and these strategies to determine the direction of where the market going. A lot of people just see the, this chart and they would think, you're just drawing a bunch of stuff and it don't make sense, right? But clearly, I just showed you, I picked random pairs. I went back to random dates and I just followed the rules of the strategy I just taught you and you saw for yourself that the strategy works, right? Now, this is just three confluences so far. We have about three, more, three or four more to go. And you would find trades which aligns all six of them in one spot. Sometimes you find a trade where this, um, this red highlighted area is and you have like six, five coincidences in that one spot and that would just tell you that, okay, this is a good level, a high probability level to enter your trade shot at. And you always want to enter high probability trades. You don't just want to enter a trade out of nowhere. That's gambling. You want to enter a trade where there's a high chance of the market going in your direction based on what the market has done in the past. Because in the forex market, we have a term that we like to say called history always repeats itself. And in the market, history always repeats itself because all these tools and these patterns that we're using now, they was only found because we went back in time and we tested them and we saw that, okay, this works like out of 100 times, this works 90 times, or this works 60 times. And then you just line it up with some other stuff that works. And now you have a strategy, which is a high probability strategy of telling you when and where the market is going to go in a particular direction. All right? Any questions? <laughs> Oh, you know, I wasn't even looking at the chat. I'll look at the chat and see what's going on. Oh, yeah. Okay, Narun. He said earlier, I sent a pick with different types of candlesticks. Um, well, personally, the candlesticks. I don't I don't really you I don't really trade the candlesticks that much, right? I'm gonna trade the general pattern the market giving me, right? But let me just explain something for you. These doji candlesticks, the candlesticks with the big wicks and the tight body, that's indecision. That's telling you that there's an equal number of buyers and sellers in the market, right? The candlesticks we where you see the, the long wicks on top and the body in the bottom. That's telling you that the market went up here, but it couldn't stay up because it have a lot of sellers that push the market back down, right? Wherever you see a long wick, that means there's a lot of um, buyers or sellers in that, in, at that level. And the market can stay at that level for long. So, so this long wick here, which is a pin, pin bar, is telling you that, no, that the market doesn't want to be on this level and it's being pushed up, right? And the reason why it is a wick is because it didn't stay there long. Right? When you see the full body candles, that's just telling you that the, the buyers is in control. Right? The buyers is in control. The, 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 the body of the candle is full. So the market opened down here and it closed up here. Right? Now, when you're trading, around an area where you expect the market to reverse, you would see indecision candles indecision candles being the doji candles, right? Now you see my candlestick is all kind of color, right? You could set up, I mean, yeah, Narun, it would add to the probability 
I mean, you could use it, but for me, I'm the type of trader, I don't wait for the market to um, slow down. Like, I don't really wait for confirmation that much, right? I just pick a high prob probability level, and the market could come steaming towards that level with the most, most strongest candlestick. And when the market reaches that level, I still enter that shot, right? But you, as if you want to be more conservative, you can wait for the market to slow down and, and form indecision um, candles, right? You could explore your own way of trading. I just showed you how I do it, right? Yeah. So, any more questions? Now, let me explain my candlesticks for you, right? I know you see usually the candlesticks is red and um, green, and my candlesticks is like four colors, right? Originally, the candlestick is, this is the original color of the candlesticks, right? I added this indicator called engulfing patterns, which adds in the red and the green. It only adds in the red and the green candlestick when that candlestick engulfs the other one right so when I say engulf I mean the body of this candlestick covers the entire body of the last few candlesticks so you see how this candlestick red is the body of this candlestick covers the last few candlesticks right all right and you see how this candlestick green here the body of this green candlestick covers the last candlestick right now that that simply tells me that these are engulfing candles and it tells me that this is, is the level has has made like a strong departure as in the market move away from that level strongly whether it be the buyers in control or the sellers in control so i know wherever i see a um a, a red candlestick the market leaves that level very strongly you know so that level i can pay attention to all right um I would um if you want to get this um pattern you just you go into let me see if I could find it um where are you going to do this well you're going to add in, you go into add um indicators move indicators I see yeah, you're going to add indicators, which will be this here. And then you type in engulfing patterns, and then you click it, and it would come here, all right? But yeah, any other questions? All right, so I guess we don't have any other questions. Send my message because you go in here, drop some in the chat, and then I go um cut it off. But so far today we cover market structure, we cover dynamic support and resistance, we cover how I use trend lines, and then we cover some candlestick patterns, right? Often now, when you're on your own, practice your trend lines. Practice, practice, practice practice okay i'm telling you it's not easy when i'm doing it it looks easy when i'm doing it but if you try to do it on your own you're gonna see a different story and when you do it on your own you can practice and just send my screenshot and i'll tell you if you're correct you know i'll tell you what you could we what, what you would need to help with oh it's, it's always good to just practice and take a screenshot, drop it in the chat, and then we'll comment on it. You never know what you might need help with. So here's what you could do, right? On your own, look at a chart, find where um, a trend line and a support and resistance and market structure level lines up, and enter a trade off of it. Take a before and after picture. When you enter the trade, 
take a before picture and then when the trade run take a after picture drop it in the chat you know but I'll find out these are three simple reasons why you can enter a trade in a particular direction all right i'll act off now have a good have a good night everybody all right good night good class mm -hmm. thanks mm -hmm.